talk about being honest and accountable, but now we're getting serious, getting close to test match. Girls, if we're coming in the next session, the girls are still making the same errors, you won't get a jersey. Simple as that. Hardest one yet. Hardest one yet, yeah. A new year and a new campaign. Wales' first season of professional women's rugby was a successful one, but there's still room for improvement. Year two needs to be a step up, and what better way to start than heading back to school? Well, have you seen the Hall of Fame up here now? Yeah. Your win's on there. Yeah, I know. He's <laughs> so young. Did you spot him? Yeah. yeah. What do you girls play? Planker. Oh, wow. Love tackling. And Jacqueline? Yeah. It's outstanding to be here today um, to launch our Six Nations squad for 2023. Um, coming off the back of a great 12 months of finishing third last in the Six Nations, reaching qualifying in the World Cup. Um, and where, where the game is going in Wales is really exciting. So we're just privileged to come back to where we started and we wanted to, to share that experience by launching the 2023 Six Nations squad with you today. Okay. So, Diochem Bao, thank you. Up a little bit higher in the back, but still high, you know, you know. With the squad announced, the selected players head to the Morning. National Morning. Centre of Excellence, where it's time to get to work. Bye-bye. Morning. <laughs> Congratulations. Everyone making our Six Nations squad. Okay, work starts now. First thing is, is to try and back up what we did last year. I thought uh, we made uh, massive strides last year. Um, obviously getting a good start is really important, especially in Six Nations. Momentum is key, uh, but also building on our performances from the World Cup. Uh, we learned a lot during that period and it's a uh, focus area for us going into this championship. Nice hands, keep it on! Keep working! We talk about being honest and accountable, but now we're getting serious, getting close to test match. So, girls, if we're coming in the next session and girls are still making the same errors, you won't get a jersey. Simple as that. So, we talk about being accountable, but being honest and respecting each other. Well, it's everyone in this circle help each other now so that someone knows their role or is not sure, really starts to get move, moving forward, not standing still. So, what we've spoken about is an opportunity to inspire a nation. You know, the purpose we hear is to is to, to leave the jersey in a better place, so to speak. Players now are, are full-time, um, and what, how do you want to leave that for the next generation? So that's quite powerful within our group. But also it's the performance, trying to focus on the small wins inside the, the, the bigger, bigger game. Yes, the result is obviously the biggest thing that we focus on, but you know, we focus on how do we score more tries, how do we, how do we convert our opportunities, and, and that's something that we've got to nail this, this Six Nations. One player who knows all about grasping opportunities is Kate Williams. She may have grown up in New Zealand, but she's put her life on hold and travelled halfway around the world for a chance to fulfil her dream of representing Wales. I was a warfare officer in the Royal New Zealand Navy. I joined in 2018 and been in there for five years. So basically I was playing rugby and I was just talking to my mum and just said how cool it would be if I could come home and play rugby for Wales. And she kind of got on her little group chats and whatnot and started talking to her friends over here. And long story short, they got in contact with Yo's through someone um, and set up a Zoom meeting for me in February of last year. Um, and I talked to Yoan um, and he said, if you're around in July, we've got pre-season. Okay, let's do that. Give me that opportunity again. So I think that was a big like proven point for actually how serious I was for this. Like out of my own pocket, um, making it work with the Navy. And just before I left, Yoan said, we'll have you on our books for the Rugby World Cup if anything goes wrong. And even that was just a big opportunity. Like my name was, you know, semi in the mix. 
I just mentioned the Hurlock World Cups in New Zealand. We'd love to have you potentially come and train with us. Um, and if we picked up any injuries, then you could come into the group. It was about 9 p.m. and I just got this call from the Sunno number and I didn't know who it was. Um, and I answered it and it was yours and he just asked if I could join them Tuesday morning. And of course, I made everything happen as quickly as possible. Yeah, I turned up at 8 a.m. on Tuesday at the hotel. <laughs> I was so excited to be in it and I've learnt so much from it already. But yeah, it was overwhelming. It was all those other things as well. I was very anxious during it. but. Um, yeah, I loved it. It was such a good experience. It's an unbelievable sacrifice, isn't it? It just shows, I think she's one example of many, the sacrifices that our players have put in over the years to, to get the red jersey. And Kate just shows that, that how much she wants it and wants to, wants to gamble an opportunity where she's got security and, and routine to come up here. And I'm sure that it'll, it'll come back and, and, and be a positive one for her. I knew one day that I wanted this to be my job, um, so I just had to go all in really. Leaving my family and friends was difficult, like my partner, uh, my boyfriend's still in New Zealand, he's planning to come over in April, but yeah, they were so excited for me, they're so proud of me. They've sacrificed lots as well for me to get to this position as well, and they're just so chuffed that, that finally I'm in a position where I get to do uh, something that I love every day. One, big Sam, big Sam. Let's go, above head. Nice, slam it down, nice, Kate. Let's go, get those. That was the hardest one yet. The hardest thing yet. The hardest one yet, yeah. You can't win test matches without being fit. Yeah. Strength and conditioning coach Avion Roberts is the man Wales rely on to get them firing on all cylinders come match day. So, just want to demo. Sit up tall, keep that chest big, and return. And this time now we're just going to punch up the back end past the back. So you've got to really brace hard for the core. That's your stable base. You can't be floppy, go keep that chest high. I guess fitness is stress inoculation in some, some respects. You're preparing them to a level where hopefully they won't have to achieve in a game. So when it comes to matches, then the, the game, we're training high, playing low, looking to try and get as much as we can from building the intensity of the rugby. So we might have blocks. We're preparing us for the worst case scenarios in games, so it was high ball and play times. This time last year, we, we had to train in the evenings because, because there, was still, there was only 12 full-time professionals uh, and then another 12 who were part-time. Now we've got full scope and we can train in the daytimes and, and optimise that training for, for the games. So we'll lock it in that floor. Keep your pelvis locked in where it is. Don't let it back, push it to the floor. Right. Carry on, let's go. We've seen massive gains in things like strength, lean mass gained. They're all, all making huge progress there. And then that ties in then with getting stronger, becoming more powerful, becoming more powerful, getting faster. So yeah, we are seeing them develop massively as athletes. Push, 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 push. <laughs> oh, we worked out a stat, it was something like uh, the, the amount of fat they'd lost and muscle gained. It was, it was something like two kilos of fat on average per player, and then one and a half kilos of muscle gained between when we played Scotland in the the Six Nations and in the World Cup and players have made massive progress since then. On Tuesday we, we had a gym session and we had 14 new personal bests on the upper body strength. So that was just across the board, so that's a yeah, good, good proportion of our squad there. With the women's Six Nations being a standalone block now, we, we have the full run of the place. Whereas before, previously it would have been, we were in the same time as the under 20s and the men's team. So now the men's Six Nations finished, the under 20s finished, we've got access to all the facilities here. We can and the facilities here are world class so we can, we can develop our programme and be the best it can be. No, we said that was the hardest one. So yeah. I was like, okay, it makes me feel slightly better because I really hard that hard. What's going on you know? Tough search? Very. <laughs> no, I need some ice. This new season comes with a new Welsh captain. Yeah. Hannah Jones is a natural leader on the pitch, but captaincy also comes with a few extra media duties. We go back and forth. Just kind of keep your smile on or smile. Uh, we'll do a mixture. First of all, we'll look serious, and we'll do a couple of smiley, happy ones. So we're we'll kind of mix it up as we go along. Proud moment, um, and for my family as well. But just really excited now. Another challenge added on to being a professional player and excited to go against Ireland next week now. 
she ticks a lot of the boxes that we want from a leader. She, she leads from the front uh, by her actions. Her work ethic, both on the field and off the field, is, is, is exceptional. Uh, and she's got this presence about her, you know, where when she's in, in the environment, people, people know that she's there and um, if she speaks, people listen. But also, what's great about Hannah, she's got an unbelievable um, thirst for learning as well and get better. So, um, just delighted to have her to continue, and, and I'm sure she will grow as a leader throughout the campaign and throughout the year. Defence girls, Kate, okay, urgency to get a position, let's get set, let's get in the face of the nominate. Yeah. E three, Let's go! Let's go! E three! I think I'm a quite calm person in general, so hoping to bring that calmness to the girls and um, hopefully bring some direction through actions as well. Almost through has had a Joan, she's still going, and that is the cherry in the hop of the Welsh cake. Hannah Jones seals this victory for Wales. From last year, obviously we had a brilliant campaign, but that's done now, so there's a new year, new, new energy. So um, just to build on performance from last year, we created a lot of opportunities in the opposition 22 and just finishing and converting those tries really to, to score points. Hi, Mum. Hi, Kate. How's it going? It's good. How are you? Good. How's training going? How are you finding it? Training's good. It's been such a level up um, from what we were doing before. I mean, it's been heaps and heaps to take in, but I think I'm getting there, getting there slowly. Yeah. It's really hard to pick you on the pitch, actually. I know. You know what's funny is that, uh, you know my new white boots that I bought? I'm glad you bought white boots. Uh, Abby Fleming has bought the exact same ones. No way. <laughs> so now we both have the... Abby Fleming, you and Abby. Yeah, the elbow yeah. strap and the orange hair. She's still wearing a white arm bandage. Yeah, the elbow strap and the orange hair and the white boots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is going to be funny. It's going to be difficult for you. <laughs> yeah. So how, how is it like, you know, when you think about to New Zealand and, you know, you had your job and rugby was your joy sort of thing, but now, now that's your job. I like it. This is my dream. Yeah. I've always wanted yeah. rugby to be my job. How is that? How is, get, how is your job being your being what you live for? Well, I get to wake up and I get to do what my favorite. I uh, get to do my favorite thing in the world. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck in the campaign. We've got our fingers crossed for you. It's a it's a fantastic opportunity. We're super proud of you. And you know, making into the squad, man. We none of us expected that, and I know you didn't expect that. So you've done super well since you've been there. Anything else is a bonus from you, really, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Thank you very much, ma'am. I All love right. you. It's all right. Love you, darling. I love you. Bye-bye. As the first week draws to a close, it's time for the team to escape the daily grind of training to head to a team-building retreat and find time to forge the bonds that will carry them through the weeks ahead. Most of us recognise that there's this real value in having a strong culture. There are three fundamental factors that impact performance. In sport, this is really easy for us to separate, okay? Ability, competency, and character. Why are you here? It's because you love what you do, right? Why are you here? It's in to inspire others. So really, it doesn't really matter whether you love it or not, you're inspiring others. There's gonna be times where you don't love it. There's gonna be times you're gonna to deal with a setback. There's gonna be times where you pick up an injury, but you're gonna get up that morning and so I'm still going to give the team everything I've got because my job, the reason I'm here is to inspire others. I believe. I believe that we love that. I believe that we love that. I believe that we can win. I believe that we can win. I believe that we can win. I Come on, keep breath. it going, keep it going. So in, deep breath, start going down. I can't see anyone down to their shoulders apart from one. You need to get down. Shoulders under, please. Everybody out, well done. It's huge to have these bonding sessions. I've seen teams that connect better. 
off field, you see the transfer on the field and you know you're going into battle, you've got each other's backs and you know you want to, to help that person on the field and if you've got that connection off field it's, it's definitely going to transfer over. Having that time together and doing something different, you know we we said we'd, we'd sacrifice some time in the gym or on the grass to, to spend time together and I think that, that can hold us uh, as a tight group moving forward. It only gets tougher from here on out. But for now at least, there's time to just take it all in and enjoy the little things.